Ready for the vacation of a lifetime? Come explore Vancouver, the city that has something for everyone. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and I'm here to show you the best way to spend 5 days in beautiful Vancouver, Canada. I'm taking you along on my journey so you can experience all the amazing things this city has to offer. From shopping to eating out, sightseeing to adventure activities, there's something here for everyone. I'll be showing you all of that and more so you can make the most of your time here. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel for future videos. Day 1. Scope out the city Welcome to the day 1 of your adventure. Today, we're going to scope out the city and get a feel for the place. One of the best ways to do this is by exploring on foot. Take a stroll around the neighborhood. Check out the local shops and grab a coffee at a charming cafe. You'll discover hidden gems and see the city from new perspective. For a great shopping experience, head to the Vancouver Art Gallery, English Bay, the Olympic Cauldron, or Robson Street. To aid in navigating, bring your smartphone along. If you'd rather do it the old school way, get a map that you can mark up as you go. Discovering Vancouver should be the focus on your first full day there. Pick up a map of Vancouver's SkyTrain system while you are exploring. Trains, buses and ferries are used to go to many tourist attractions. Purchase a reloadable compass card at a SkyTrain station if you plan to use the public transportation frequently. While exploring is enjoyable, you might prefer a more elevated vantage point. Fantastic aerial views may be seen at the Vancouver Lookout, which also features a rotating restaurant. You may travel to Vancouver Island for the day if you want to cross visiting Butchard Gardens off your bucket list. Seaplanes take off from downtown Cole Harbor. It is occasionally possible to combine aerial sightseeing with other attraction, so search for packages that, for instance, including access to the Capilano Suspension Bridge and a float plane. However, tours can be pricey and it's simple to quickly go over your travel budget. Even if day one is cloudy or wet, flying over Canada still allows guests to experience Canada's natural splendor. A 4D cinematic experience called Fly Over Canada includes scents, winds, and sounds from nature. Day 2 – Whale Watching Vancouver Aquarium On day two of your Vancouver adventure, get ready to witness the wonders of whale watching at Vancouver Aquarium. Vancouver is home to an abundance of marine life and getting a glimpse of the majestic whales is truly an experience of a lifetime. The aquarium offers a variety of whale watching opportunities and educational programs that cater to both local and tourists. You will be amazed by these gentle creatures as they swim and play in their natural habitat. Whether you're a first-time visitor to Vancouver or a seasoned traveler, a day spent whale watching at Vancouver Aquarium is a memory that you will treasure forever. Although the aquarium is year-round, the whales may be seasonal. Vancouver Aquarium is the biggest in Canada and is situated in the lovely Stanley Park. The institution is home to sea otters penguins, indigenous marine life, and a marine animal rehabilitation center. Stanley Park, the area surrounding the aquarium, also merits an own header. In the park, you're free to swim, kayak, hike, play tennis, ride a bike, or rollerblade. The park also features a number of sculptures, many of which were created by artisans from First Nations. If the weather is nice, you could easily spend the entire day visiting Stanley Park and the aquarium. From downtown Vancouver, the park is only 5 to 10 minutes drive or walk away. If you don't see any whales, the combo is fantastic alternative. Day 3 – Capilano Suspension Bridge Park – Grouse Mountain Day 3 in Vancouver is sure to be an adventure-filled one as we explore two must-visit attractions, Capilano Suspension Bridge Park and Grouse Mountain. Capilano Suspension Bridge Park is home to a 450-foot long suspension bridge that sways gently over the Capilano River and boasts stunning views of the surrounding forest. If you're feeling bold, you can also try the Cliff Walk, a narrow walkway that juts out from the granite cliffside above the canyon. Next up is Grouse Mountain, accessible by a scenic gondola ride. 
Once you reach the top, you'll be treated to breathtaking views of the city and surrounding mountains. You can also catch a lumberjack show or visit the resident grizzly bears with so much to see and do. Day 3 is sure to be a highlight of your Vancouver trip. Day 4 Take a food or film tour. Welcome to day 4 of your adventure. Today is all about immersing yourself in the local culture. And what better way to do that than by taking a food or film tour? Whether you're a foodie or a film buff, these tours offer a unique way to experience the city. You'll explore local neighborhoods and try out some of the best eats the city has to offer or discover filming locations of your favorite movies and TV shows. Not only will you satisfy your appetite for delicious food or cinematic knowledge, but you'll also learn more about the city's history and culture. Did you know that Vancouver is where a lot of the shows and movies you enjoy were filmed? There were also scenes for the movie Fifty Shades of Grey, Man of Steel, both Percy Jackson films and Breaking Dawn Part 2 shot. Vancouver is referred to as Hollywood North for a good reason. If you're interested in the history of Gaston or in haunted tours, Vancouver has both. Day 5 – Granville Island On the fifth day of your trip, you'll be visiting Granville Island, a buzzing hub of creativity, culture and delicious food. Located in the heart of Vancouver, this former industrial site has been transformed into a vibrant neighborhood home to a thriving art scene, bustling markets and a wide variety of dining options. In addition to exploring the many artisan shops and galleries, be sure to visit the Granville Island Public Market where you can sample fresh seafood, locally grown produce and specialty foods from around the world. Whether you're interested in the arts, cuisine or simply soaking up the vibrant atmosphere, there's something for everyone on Granville Island. Speaking of kids, Granville Island is a must-stop if you're traveling with kids in the summer. Granville Island boasts a free water park in addition to wonderful restaurants and stores. Get in while you can because the park is only open from mid-May to early September. Granville Island can be an ideal way to cap off your 5-day plan for Vancouver, even though this list is changeable. Get your money out and leave! I hope you have a better idea of what to do during your stay in Vancouver. If you follow my 5-day itinerary above, you will get an excellent experience that cannot be found elsewhere. The culture and landscape of Vancouver sets it apart from other cities. From whale watching to strolling around the Granville Island, there are unlimited activities that you can choose from. No matter which activities or events you decide to explore, be sure to take a lot of pictures and documents your journey and don't forget to enjoy the wonderful city packed with beautiful scenery and cultural heritage. Now tell me, which of these activities would you like to do in Vancouver? Let me know in the comments below. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.